just want to show you some of the updates with my cells, a new design that I've come up with, inspired by some other builders I've seen online, and I decided that it looks like a very smart, clean way to go for these dry cells. Um, I've gone to what's called what we call the bolt-through method now for my plate designs. Um, as you can see right here in the shot, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I have now gone with a quarter-inch brass bolt through the whole cell from end to end. I have it countersunk in the back of the plate so it won't uh, hit anything on the outer edge in case it was hit the body or something was to rub against it that wouldn't short out the cell on the back side. And then you can see I have a, uh, what I've got going on is a 4N3 and the first power plate is right there on the left and then the, the second power plate is sandwiched in between two brass nuts. It's a quarter inch by three inch um, brass bolt going through there, threaded all the way through. And then what I've done is I've gone with a number eight gauge wiring now. Instead of four wires, I'm now down to only two. As you can see right here, there's a positive and a negative. And they basically connect to the stud right here. We can zoom out a little bit. And there we go. So we have the uh, ring terminal, uh, shrink solder ring terminal there shrink solder ring terminal right there, you can't really see it too well. And both of these then go into my power supply which is right here. And I'm running this cell, it's a brand new cell, I'm conditioning the plates, getting the, uh, the oils off of it. It's 13.8 volts on the right, 22 amps on the left. Um, still produces the uh, good old 2 liters per minute at 30 amps. But I did want to give you an update on the new design I'm going to take a pause real quick and show you some of the difference. Okay, as many of you know, cell. I was using push-on terminals, which are the shrink solder push-on terminals for my testing and prototyping, which were very handy for what I was doing. But for installs in vehicles, I decided to go with the two wires versus the four. Um, with the tabs, the push-on connectors, I'd have four wires coming out of the cell. Right now I'm down to two. I had to increase them to eight gauge, so each wire can handle 30 to 40, 50 amps each or greater on each wire because they're now spanning the entire cell on each power plate so they're going to carry the full load of amperage on the cell now. But I think it's much cleaner design than the other. The other design was fine but I just had a hard time finding, if not impossible, finding um, 8 gauge push-on terminals for 8 gauge wire. So that was one of the reasons that drove me into going with the bolt design. And then I found out that uh, Unlike stainless steel, the brass does handle higher amperages fairly well. I saw one video saying he pushed it up to 150 amps with no heat. And I will test that out myself. The key with these, I found out, like all connections, you've got to maintain a very tight connection between the bolts and each plate. Very, very tight. If there's any loose at all, the, the uh, bolt and the nuts will heat up. Your terminal's got to be very tight and your both nuts on either side have to be tight. This has to be tight as well against here. You can see that's sandwiching the uh, final, the first uh, power plate against the end plate. And then finally the bolt itself has to be tight going across each um, end plate there as well. So the new design has a tab on it that allows me to, um, it's a simple design with a tab on the outer edge that allows me to penetrate all the power plates with a quarter inch bolt. Uh, the neutrals you can see between here are just simple rectangles with no no uh, 45s or anything. So it's a very much more simple design, easier to fabricate, easier to manufacture, and um, it works just as well, if not maybe a little better than the other one due to the fact it's more simple to install with less wiring. And here's the old power plate right here. As you can see, it has the notch, and that would be where the uh, push-on terminal would go. I'm going to pause real quick and get my one of my new power plates just to show you what the new one looks like. So here's the old one. Okay, here's the new one. You can see it has a tab on it. And basically, I can just alternate on either side if I want to go positive or negative. It covers the neutral plates nice and evenly. So I can do both sides as well. One on the left, one on the right. And that's how I get my connections. And then, of course, that's the old style. But basically, the neutrals are rectangle on either side of this. So it works really well. I'm very happy with it. Um, I do want to test the higher amperages um, for my larger cell designs like the 12 inch Mega that I've been working on right here. I want to quickly show you this. 
Um, what I've done was I took one of the push-on terminals and I shrink soldered it and um, then I actually soldered the terminal connector to the uh, tab to give it a very good bond because <clears throat> they're the higher amperages the push-on connectors cannot handle the higher amperages so you, you can solder it and it gives a better connection and keeps the heat down so I'm hoping I'll be able to run this because I found had the darndest time I couldn't find anybody that made an 8 inch 8 inch 8 gauge shrink um, or excuse me an 8 gauge push on terminal um, out there and I tried all over so I finally just modified one of my existing ones I opened up the um, push on terminal one of these I cut it open spread the gap out a little bit so the 8 gauge would fit in there and then I actually literally soldered it with a really nice little torch I got one of those micro torches and boy those things are nice for doing soldering really did a great job of soldering everything together because you can really control the heat and direct it. Maybe I'll do a video of that sometime, but I was really just one of those simple um, butane-powered mini torches. I was really impressed with how good it did for soldering these connections because you can't really do it with a soldering iron and a, and, a, and a large torch just melts everything. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. I did want to update you on the cell, what I've been doing. Um, Again, I'm pretty happy with this new setup. It's very clean, as you can see. Real simple and very rugged. I like to keep things simple. 